Over the past weeks, new leaks and rumors about the RTX 4090 Ti and the RTX 4070 have surfaced, starting on Twitter, making their way onto hardware news websites, and finally into rumor videos right here on YouTube. But we won't look at them, at least not right now. Our goal is to create a realistic version of how the 4090 Ti and 4070 will look like in terms of specs and performance by only using confirmed and openly available information. Once we have done that, we will then compare our results to the leaks and rumors and see how close we came. If you are feeling lucky, leave a comment down below if you think we can match the rumor mill just by using our brains and public information. Let's begin with the RTX 4090 Ti. The first thing I always do is look at a previous generation. More often than not, it's a really good indication of how the next generation will turn out. Because we are trying to build a realistic version of the 4090 Ti, let's have a quick look at the 3090 Ti and how it compares to the base 3090, with the idea in mind that we can use that information to our advantage. But where do we get the required information from? One way would be to look up old reviews on websites like Anantech, TechSpot, Computerbase and so on. But there is a better way in form of the Tech Power Up GPU database. Aside from releasing the amazing GPU-C app, which everyone interested in GPUs should already know, the guys over at Tech Power Up also maintain this amazing tool. The GPU database is very well maintained and has entries for basically every graphics card you can think of, and then some. You don't even need to know the individual GPUs or chip code names. It's sorted by year and generation. I've pulled up the entries for both the 3090 and 3090Ti, and we can see all the important specs, from the amount of CUDA cores, texture mapping units, and render output units, to the memory system. But the important part for us is the chip that powers those graphics cards. In both cases, it's NVIDIA's Ampere generation GA102. If we click on GA102, Tech Power Up provides a really handy list with all GPUs that are based on this specific chip. And as you can see, a lot of Ampere GPUs are based on GA102, from the 3080 all the way up to the 3090 Ti. But of course, all these GPUs are using different versions of GA102 with more or less hardware units enabled or disabled. The important takeaway is that only the 3090 Ti is using a fully enabled chip. That's all the information we need. I'm sure you can already guess our next step. Looking up the RTX 4090, we can see it's based on the new Ada Lovelace generation AD102 chip. But just like the 3090, it's not using the full chip. Some parts are disabled, leaving room for a faster 4090 Ti or Titan. I've compiled all the most important specs of the full AD102 chip in this slide, and if we compare it to the specs of the RTX 4090, we can clearly see the differences. The 4090 uses only 89% of the available CUDA cores, and other parts of the chip are cut down even more. The L2 cache, for example, is reduced by a whopping 25%. Armed with that knowledge, we can already estimate how the 4090 Ti will look like, probably very close to the specs of a full AD102. But there are also other GPUs based on AD102, besides the 4090. Nvidia's RTX 6000, for example, yes, that's a real product, is a GPU targeting the professional market. It's using an almost fully enabled AD102 chip with only a few shader cores, team use, and related hardware turned off but the full amount of render output units and L2 cache. This could very well be an option for the 4090 Ti. Instead of using the full chip, just a slight 1.4% cut can increase how many AD102 chips Nvidia can use for the 4090 Ti, since chips with zero defects are really rare. With that, we have our first result, a RTX 4090 Ti based on the same chip as the RTX 6000, without watching any leaks and rumors videos just by using our brains and public information. This version of the 4090 Ti has about 10% more hardware units and a 33% larger L2 cache. These numbers also show that the 4090 Ti has the potential to be a lot faster than the 4090. If Nvidia combines about 10% more hardware units with 5-10% to higher clock speeds, it could turn out 15-20% to faster, a massive leap over the already blazing fast 4090. And even without higher clock speeds, a 10% uplift is possible. Now for the fun part. Let's have a look at the latest leaks from known Twitter leaker copite 7 kimmy who by the way has a really good track record. It's spot on. Not only that, our version was even more detailed, only lacking parts we can't really know like memory speeds and TDP. Who is the leaker now? Jokes aside, it's remarkable how easy it is to consistently confirm hardware leaks especially for GPUs where we already have a point of reference. I take leaks from Corbett 7 Kimmy very serious and with some basic fact checking on our own, we can basically confirm his claims. 
Next is the RTX 4070. Maybe not as flashy, but certainly much more affordable and I think for many here it could be a possible upgrade path, if it's any good that is. I'm not going to go over the whole process again, but let's try and figure out how the 4070 could roughly look like. Taking the past generation into account, we can see that both the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti are again based on the same chip, this time GA104. The 3070Ti uses the fully enabled chip with 6144 CUDA cores, while the 3070 is cut down, but this time it's only by around 4%, which isn't very much at all. Clock speeds are similar too, something that reflects in the benchmarks. There's only a 5% performance difference between the two cards. Why is that? The 3070Ti launched over half a year after the 3070, in the midst of the GPU shortage and wasn't really meant to complement Nvidia's Imperial lineup. It was a way to sell slightly faster cards for a higher price. Now the situation is different. The 4070Ti launched first, with the 4070 to follow and without the GPU shortage in play. Not that I wouldn't like a really fast 4070, but it's highly unlikely that we will see a repeat of what Nvidia did last gen. The 4070 won't just be 5% slower than the 4070Ti. I picked the 4070 as an example because it shows how different fact checking can turn out and that sometimes you have to think outside the box. With the 4090Ti everything was simple and straightforward. All we needed to do was to extrapolate from the 3090Ti. Now everything is different with the 4070, but don't worry, we are not giving up that fast. Here is another angle we can take. If 3070 and 3070Ti are basically the same performance tier, what was the next actual step in performance last generation? It has to be the 3060Ti. Checking the Tech Power Up GPU database, we can see that the 3060Ti is also based on the same GA104 chip. Now we have our point of reference. Compared to the 3070Ti, the real next product here, the 3060Ti, has a pretty significant reduction in shader cores, by about 21%. But that's also a clear performance segmentation, something Nvidia wants when building up their initial lineup. With that 21% in mind, we can once again carry over our knowledge to the 4070. The 4070Ti on the left is using the full AD104 chip, with 7680 CUDA cores, 240 TMUs, 80 ROPs, and 48 megabytes of L2 cache. Our version of the 4070 on the right will be based on the relation of the 3060Ti to the 3070Ti. Now it's important to understand that the 7680 CUDA cores of the 4070Ti are bundled in 60 so-called SM units with 128 cores each, and we can't simply reduce it by 21%, because partial SM units are not possible. 60 reduced by 21% would be 47.4, if Nvidia sticks to the same proportion as last gen, it has to be either 46 or 48 SM units for the 4070, which would result in either 6144 or 5888 CUDA cores. This uncertainty also impacts the amount of TMUs, tensor and ray tracing cores. ROPs and L2 cache size can be more independently tweaked by Nvidia. These numbers are just rough estimates based on a 21% reduction from the 4070Ti. In the end, our version of the 4070 is more of a range, but I honestly think it's pretty good. The difference between a 48 and a 46 SM version of the 4070 would be around 4%, close enough and more than just a guess. Performance-wise, both versions would be about 15-20% to slower than the 4070 Ti, and if Nvidia wants to keep a similar price to performance ratio, 21% of the $799 MSRP for the 4070 Ti would be about $630. If I can trust my gut, I would bet on a $599 MSRP for the RTX 4070. Now let's compare our versions of the 4070 to the latest leaks and rumors and of course copite 7 Kimi has the right tweet for us. And what can I say, it's again looking very good for our fact checking effort. Yes, we weren't sure if it's 46 or 48 SMs, but we did get the specs right. It was either one or the other, not a simple guess. A job very well done. You deserve a pat on the back. I honestly had a lot of fun making this video because it shows that sometimes all we need is our brain and already available public data to get scary close to all those leaks and rumors floating around. It's never 100%, but I think the combination of leaks with fact checking has a very high success rate. If you like this type of video and want to see more rumor fact checking in the future, leave a comment down below. And if you wrote a comment at the beginning of the video with a guess of how close we would get, now is the time to get back to that. Did you guess right? I think we went two for two. I hope you learned something new today. You know what to do if you did and see you in the next one.